Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video to Studio and today I'm going to share with you how to create a percentage contour in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. Alright, so we are on the edit page and we're going to start by bringing a new Fusion composition in our timeline. So we're going to just drag that in and move over to Fusion. Once in Fusion, the first thing I want to do is bring a new background node and then link the output of that background to the media out. Then I'm going to bring a second background and link the output of that background to my first one. Then we're going to just select the background too and I click on the ellipse mask. Here I'm going to select my background too and I'm going to swap the color from black to white so we can see the circle that we just created with the ellipse mask. Now I'm going to select the ellipse and here I'm going to link the width and the height so when I'm modifying those values they'll stay the same and they don't deform the circle. So we're just going to link that together by right clicking on the width and here select expression and link the width to the height. Now when we're moving the height as you can see the width is moving accordingly and we retain a perfect circle. We're gonna make it 0.3 and then here we're gonna untick solid and we're gonna just raise the bottom width. As for now let's do 0.005. Now we're going to create a second circle, but we're gonna just create it from the ellipse as an instance. So I'm gonna just select ellipse copy it and then right next to it i'm simply going to right click and paste instance then i'm going to bring a new background link that instance to the background and then link the background to the merge tool then here i'm going to change the color of the background from black to green and we're going to go back to the instance and here i want to uninstance the border width by right clicking on it and then the instance it and then i'm going to right click on the lens and i'm going to deinstance it as well I've made a video more in depth about instance node that I will link in the description below if you want to just learn a bit more about it. Then we're just gonna make our circle width a bit bigger. So we're gonna switch from 0.005 to 0.015. Now, as you can see, if we're adjusting the lens, that's what's gonna serve as our contour. But we need to here modify the position. So the contour doesn't start from the right side right here, but it starts from the top that will just be nicer. So here I'm going to switch the position to 0.25. Here we go. Now it's just starting from the top. Now we're going to create a custom control that can allow us to display the percentage in the middle of the circle as numbers and to make sure that those numbers on screen match the length of the circle. So we're going to do that right now by clicking on the instance ellipse, right clicking on it, create edit control. We're going to rename that control percentage and then we're going to select here slider control and select the range from 0 to 100 and then here in page we're just going to select it in control so to make sure that it's appearing on the control page otherwise if you select user they will just create an extra user page right here if you check image they will appear in image so right now we just want to have it in control so it's easy to see let's click ok and as you can see, that control has been created. It's a custom slider that go from zero to 100. But as you can see, there is nothing linked to it yet. We're gonna need to link that to the length to make it tech effect. To do that first, I'm just gonna rename my instance ellipse because we're gonna need to reference that name multiple times. So here, I'm just gonna right click on it and I'm gonna just select rename. And here, we're just gonna call it circle. Now we can just right click on the lens and select expression and we're going to link the percentage and the lens together. So I'm going to just write a simple expression by writing circle, which is the name of the node where those parameters are in, then dot and then percentage, which is the parameter that I want to link it with. So percentage. Make sure to have everything written the exact same way, the capital included, otherwise it will not work because it's case sensitive. Then we're just gonna do slash 100. And as you can see, if we're adjusting the value of the percentage, it's adjusting the value that you can see on screen represented with the circle. If you're wondering why we did that instead of just doing it directly on the lens, which would have worked perfectly fine as well, it's because we're gonna need to have those exact value that go up from zero to 100 instead of having them going from zero to one because that value is gonna be pulled off to appear on screen right there in the text node. So let's just bring a text node and let me show you right away how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna link the output of the text to the merge and then here we're gonna just go back to the text right click on it and then here we're just going to select expression and then we're going to write another expression right there 
First, I'm going to do the exact same thing I've done before by linking this text with the slider. So we can actually copy what we've done right there. We can just copy circle.percentages, which should just locate the parameter and link it to that parameter. So let's go to text, paste that, circle.percentages. But we're going to add a couple of things. So we're just going to enclose this in between parentheses. And as you can see now, we have 100 being displayed. But if we go back to circle and we make some modification, we have those modifications appearing on screen. But as you can see, the number is not rounded up. So we have a dot, you know, after it. So we want to adjust that and make sure that it's only going from one, two, three, four, five, and that we don't have in between here with dot three, etc. To do that, we're just going to go back to text and just prior that we're going to write floor. So floor and then that's just gonna round that number up so now if we make some adjustment as you can see the value might be you know 47.6 but it has been rounded down or rounded up to 47. now to add the percentage we can just go back to our expression just write dot dot after it open quotation mark and then here percentage sign and then end the quotation mark and now we just have the percentage sign right after our number now let's just continue to stylize that. I'm just gonna go over and change the font for Montserrat, increase the size a little bit. And now if we go back to circle, as you can see with percentage, if we start to move it around, it's just uh, behaving accordingly where we have a display on the screen, the percentage, and this is proportional to the circle. Now for the animation, you could just simply keyframe that and it will work perfectly fine. And then just feel free to do some opacity and transform animation to uh, make it pop in and out. But if you want to be able to quickly and easily change the value because you want to reuse that title, I'm just going to share with you how to do that. So right here, we're going to right click on percentage and we're going to just go with modify with and in curve. Then here we're going to go over to the modifier and we're going to switch from transition to duration. And here we're going to switch the curve linear to custom. We're just going to drop a point here on our curve and we're going to switch the in to 0.2. And then we're going to put the out at 1. To smooth out that animation, I'm just going to select my two point and hit S on my keyboard. It helped created a bell curve at the top, but here we're just going to take that handle and create something more like a S curve at the bottom like that. Now if we play it, as you can see, it doesn't play properly. We got it uh, having some sort of bug between the 99 and 100. To fix that, simply go to the third point and then just delete it. For whatever reason, that's creating a bug because there is a slight shift maybe in value between those two. But now when we delete that, as you can see, it's playing fine. Why doing that instead of keyframing? Well, now we're able to change that value here in scale, but we'll retain the animation. So here I can modify it and put it to 62%. And if we play it, as you can see, it just don't go to 100%, stop at 62. We can switch that for whatever value we want um, and it will retain the animation. So that's the technique I will recommend instead of using keyframe, if you plan on reusing that title over and over, or even creating a macro, that's just going to make it easier to use. Because by dropping keyframe, if you're not on the exact frame where uh, you have the final value, it will just mess up with animation. So you always have to remember on which frame you drop it, etc. So that's a bit of a hassle. With this one, that's just going to be very easy to switch that value. So now let's just finish the animation. To do that, we're going to use a transform node and a brightness and contrast node to create the opacity animation. So I'm going to select my merge and then here I'm going to bring a transform node and right after the transform node I'm going to bring a brightness and contrast node. Now we're going to go to frame 30 and I'm going to go to my brightness and contrast node, activate to alpha channel and drop a keyframe on the gain at 1 and then go to frame 0 and bring the gain down to 0. Now by doing that, I realized that I didn't bring the alpha channel of my background down to zero. So I'm just going to do that right now by going to the background one and then here bringing the alpha channel down to zero to have full transparency. And now we have an opacity animation, which is going to add a size animation to it, which is going to go to transform. And then here I'm going to go to frame zero. I'm going to drop a keyframe here on the size at one. And then we're going to go to frame 30 and then go to size and modify it to 0.8. Now let's just smooth that animation by going to the spline editor. And then here, a quick tip to quickly find your keyframe in the spline. You can just go over to settings and then here, show only selected tool. And I know that I just want to transform and the brightness and contrast. I'm going to select those two. And then 
here activate the transform, click zoom to fit, select on my point and then hit S on our keyboard to smooth out that curve, hit T to bring the easy in and ease out and bring the easy in up to 85. Now that we have our title mostly done, we can make some final adjustment. Right now I'm gonna add some drop shadow and a glow. So I'm gonna start by selecting here my brightness and contrast, it's just based on my keyboard, and I'm gonna search for glow, bring that in, and then I'm gonna go to the background three, it shifts based on my keyboard, and this time I'm gonna search for the soft glow and bring that in. In the soft glow, we're just gonna bring the game down a little bit, right there, and I'm happy with that. And then here in the glow, we're gonna just bring the glow down a little bit as well. It just helps to make our title pop a little bit more. Now, after the glow, we can hit shift space on our keyboard and we can search for a drop shadow and then bring that in. Here, I'm gonna reduce the drop distance and then you can just either increase or reduce the strength of that shadow. Also here, instead of having a solid color, we could choose to have a gradient. So I'm gonna go to my background three and here switch from solid color to gradient. And then here we're gonna select two colors. So I'm gonna go to my color wheels and then I'm gonna select maybe blue and then cyan. Then you can just move those points around. So I will just bring the blue up top and the cyan down there. Just so we had the change of color happening step by step. So the beginning being blue and the end being cyan. And that's pretty much it. Hope this video was helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. And see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.